In one of my previous videos, I talked about the great value Intel's latest i3-12100 and i5-12400 Alder Lake CPUs offer for gamers. However, AMD doesn't have any alternative to these CPUs in their lineup, which is a shame because it's a really important segment in my opinion, and one they were well known for serving at one point. But what if AMD had released or releases a Ryzen 3 5300X? Would it be a viable alternative? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. This is going to be a pretty interesting video because what I'm going to be doing is simulating some benchmarks of a hypothetical Ryzen 3 5300X. What if, as an answer to Intel's budget Alder Lake parts like the i3-12100, AMD released a 4-core 8-thread Zen 3 CPU to join the rest of the parts in the Ryzen 5000 family? The Ryzen 5000 series hit store shelves back in November 2020, and AMD released parts which targeted various segments such as the mid-range market with the 5600X, and the enthusiast high end with parts like the Ryzen 9 5900X and Ryzen 9 5950X. However, one segment they left out was the budget and mainstream category, the $150 to $200 segment that a huge chunk of the PC gaming market resides in. It was assumed that later on we'd see a budget version of the Ryzen 5 5600X as the 5600 non-X or perhaps a Ryzen 3 5300X. However, 2021 is past us now and we didn't see AMD release anything remotely close to those CPUs. This has left a pretty big void and Intel capitalized on it perfectly with parts such as the i3-12100 and i5-12400. These are parts which don't break the bank but can offer gaming performance that's about on par with some of the best gaming CPUs on the market like the i7-12700K or AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X. Now I go over this in more detail in my previous video so I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you're interested but for this video what I'll be showing you guys are some gaming benchmarks that I conducted on my test rig using my Ryzen 7 5800X to see what kind of performance we could expect had AMD released or if they decide to release a Ryzen 3 5300X as a counter. Before we get into the gaming benchmarks, I wanted to establish a reference point to see what kind of performance a 5300X would need to offer for it to be considered a viable alternative to a i3-12100. Now, I don't have an i3-12100, but what we can do is look at some benchmarks by other reputable reviewers as that will give us a pretty good idea of the performance gap between a i3-12100 and a Ryzen 7 5800X. Hardware Unboxed on YouTube makes excellent review videos for PC components, and they did a review of the i3-12100 recently. In the review with the 6900 XT, they found at 1080p the i3-12100 was 24% slower than the 5800X. Tech Power Up is also another great site I read for hardware reviews, and they found that with an RTX 3080, the 12100 was 11% slower than the 5800X at stock. Computer Base, who are a well-known German hardware site, found that with an RTX 3080 at 1080p, the 5800X was about 21% faster. So with a high-end GPU at 1080p, depending on the title, I'd say you'd be correct in expecting there to be anywhere from a 10-20% to 20 performance difference between a 5800X and 12100. Therefore, a Ryzen 3 5300X would need to fall within that margin for it to look like an enticing alternative. To simulate these benchmarks, it was fairly straightforward. I went into my motherboard's BIOS and used the CPU core control option. By default, it's set to auto, which means it will default to using all available cores the CPU has. However, if you were to configure it to 4 plus 0, then we're disabling half the cores effectively, turning this CPU into a quad core, which is what we want. Also, along with disabling four cores, I also enforce TDP limits, which are equivalent to the stock limits of a 65 watt TDP part, because if AMD does release a 5300X down the road, they will no doubt configure it with a 65 watt TDP. Unfortunately, there wasn't much I could do about the stock boost algorithm. I'm going to assume that a 5300X would probably launch with boost clocks lower than a 5800X obviously due to binning, but I can't imagine it being less than 4.6 or 4.5 gigahertz. And really with PBO tuning, it's fairly easy to boost it, so it's not a huge concern there. 
As for the rest of the specs, my Ryzen 7 5800X is cooled by an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. For the RAM, we've got four 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 3600CL14 memory. The GPU is an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090. For our boot drive, we have a 2TB Samsung 970EVO Plus M.2 NVMe. And powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3 power supply. We'll be taking a look at 11 games I tested at 1080p, using mostly high settings with some exceptions, as this will put us in a scenario where we are CPU bound, but I also didn't want to use super low settings as that wouldn't really be realistic. So now that we've gotten a bit of background, the test methodology, and system specs, let's jump into the gaming benchmarks. First up, we've got Red Dead Redemption 2, and from our simulated 5300X, we're seeing decent performance here. It's just 9% slower when it comes to the average FPS, but it's 20% slower when looking at the 1% lows. Still, these numbers would suggest an overall smooth experience from both processors, but do these numbers tell the whole story? More on that later on in the video. Far Cry 6 is the latest installment in this open world first person franchise, and overall performance here between the two configs is close enough to the point where either the 5800X or the 5300X could give you a pretty enjoyable experience. It's 11% slower with respect to the average FPS, while the 1% lows see a smaller margin at just 6%. Forza Horizon 5 is an absolutely beautiful open world racing title, and this game is more GPU bound than it is CPU bound. That's evident by the figures seen here. We're looking at a 5% margin for the average FPS, and 15% for the 1% lows. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a pretty CPU demanding title, as here we're seeing a whopping 26% lead that the 5800X has over the simulated 5300X, and that margin is also the same for the 1% lows. With that said though, this is one of those titles that I like to use for CPU testing, but at the end of the day, it's a visually attractive single player adventure title where you'd be totally fine with a 60 FPS average. Assassin's Creed Valhalla basically shows us that it really doesn't care about which CPU you use in this scenario, so let's move on. Watch Dogs Legion shows us that when it comes to the average frame rate, the 8-core Zen 3 CPU enjoys a 10% lead over the quad-core, but where the 5800X has its biggest advantage is in terms of the 1% lows, where we see margins of up to 28%. Cyberpunk is another open world title which can be fairly CPU intensive and does scale off multiple threads. Here we can see that the 5800X leads the simulated 5300X by 17% for the average FPS and is also ahead by 24% when it comes to the 1% lows. Hitman 2 was tested in the Miami level where you're going through several sequences with a lot of NPCs on screen and scenes like this are quite CPU intensive. Both configs put up some decent numbers though, and as the 5800X attains an average FPS of 174 and 128 for the 1% lows, while the simulated 5300X attains 160 FPS and 116 respectively, so it's not trailing too far behind. CSGO is a title that is heavily bottlenecked by a single thread, and that's evident here as both configs are pretty close, and you'd be pretty hard to tell the difference between the two with averages above 600 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn is next, and while the differences between the two configs when it comes to the averages is only just 11%, we see a massive 86% difference when it comes to the 1% lows. I also did notice that the quad-core configuration was more prone to hitching and stuttering as opposed to when we ran the 5800X with all 8 cores enabled. I'll show you guys why in just a moment. The last game we'll take a look at, and this is a popular one amongst my reviewers, so I like to include it, and that is Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. I've talked about this game in previous CPU reviews, and it's quite CPU demanding where it does actually scale off multiple threads. Past 8 cores though, and you get to the point of diminishing returns, as the 5800X was just as fast, or if not lightly, slightly faster than my 5900X when I tested them, but here we're looking at a whopping 44% improvement when it comes to the average FPS, and 47% for the 1% lows. If you're someone who's a diehard Bannerlord fan and you like to partake in large raids, sieges, then having a fast CPU with more than 4 cores is probably something you'll want to invest in. Now that we've taken a look at all the games, it's time we take a look at our 11 game average, and the results aren't really surprising once we went through each game. On average, we're looking at a 10% difference when it comes to the average FPS, and a 20% difference for the 1% lows. The difference would tell you that a quad-core Zen 3 would be a pretty good alternative in AMD's lineup to the i3-12100. I suspect there would be times where the 5300X would be ahead and some cases where the 12100 would be ahead, so I'm assuming they would be pretty neck and neck overall. 
Pricing is what would be a huge factor in where the customer goes with their purchasing decision. Considering AMD's recent behavior, I'd say they'd probably be releasing the CPU at $140, maybe $150, but that would be really pushing it. Nonetheless, for those entry-level and budget gamers, it would be a pretty good option as we can see that it is able to keep up with the 5800X for the most part. While the average results here would imply that a 5300X would give the user a relatively smooth experience, the numbers don't necessarily tell the full story. And also, considering future titles, this quad core may have a shorter lifespan for relevancy. I wanted to show you guys some gameplay I recorded when simulating the 5300X. In a game like Forza Horizon 5, where you are primarily GPU bound, we can see high CPU usage, but it's nothing extreme or too concerning. And the results from our graph showed us that as well. However, looking at a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, we can see very high CPU usage. You'll see all threads hit 100% occasionally. This would cause micro stuttering, and you could just feel it wasn't consistently smooth. This behavior was also present in many other modern games I tested as well. Cyberpunk 2077 also displayed the same sort of behavior. I think this was one of the worst one out of all of them. And we can also see similar behavior from other titles tested, such as Hitman 2 and Bannerlord. Which is very interesting to see, the experience is for the most part still very smooth and it's very playable, but those high thread utilizations do concern me. I think my biggest worry is down the road as games become even more thread heavy and multi-core heavy, how long until a quad core with hyper threading just can't give you a smooth enough experience anymore? This was something I started to notice back in 2017 when I jumped ship to the Ryzen 7 1800X from an i5-6600K. And since then, all my machines have had 8 core or higher CPUs, so it's not something I focused on or paid much attention to as I do now. Also, keep in mind, this is just a test bench. It's not my personal rig. I don't really have any other background processes running that would hog up CPU resources. I was told by many people back in 2017 that I had downgraded in some ways, and while that was true, I did see that even back then, there were games that would max out a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU. And people back then were still on that mantra of, you know, 4 core i5s were all that you needed for gaming. So it was a matter of time until the ones with hyper threading are nearing their limit. And in the long run, the 1800X was the better choice. I'll be honest, I wasn't actually anticipating I had encountered these sort of situations because I made this video with the intention to talk about an alternative to the i3-12100, which is a quad core with hyper threading. And I get it, people have their budget to work with, and if that's all you can get, then, you know, it is what it is. But now I'm inclined to say that while they're decent bang-for-the-buck options, I really think that you'd be better off spending money on an i5-12400, or if AMD would just finally release a 5600 non-hex, then they would be doing everyone a huge favor in this segment. But circling back to pricing, if the i3-12100 or Ryzen 3 5300X are the only two options, then I could see arguments made for both sides. For the i3-12100, it's on a newer platform, but the motherboards are still fairly expensive, and there's not a huge selection of them. Whereas with AMD, they're on an older platform, sure, but it's a lot cheaper, and you can pair that 5300X with a B550 or B450 motherboard for less than $100, and you'd be well on your way. But I think buyers in this segment, who are more budget conscious, would care about that much more than they would about, you know, platform longevity or future proofing. At the end of the day though, this is all just a big what if scenario. AMD probably won't even release a Ryzen 3 5300X. I think if they had the intention of doing so, we should have seen one a long time ago. And we might not even see a budget option from them until Zen 4, Ryzen 7000 series. Nonetheless, I had fun doing these benchmarks and ended up stumbling upon some really intriguing data that I was happy to show you guys. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.